of water flow, and it's a mini workflow. So um, any surface that you bring in, um, you can analyze the, the flow across that. And then there are ways that you could um, use a mesh as well, I think. Um, you may need to bypass this mesh to brep component, but anything on this topography layer should come in and flow through the through the workflow and get visualized as elevation, but also have water flow across it, as you can see here. So um, water runs downhill, and that's one of the things you'll find here. But more importantly, you get some really neat um, neat phenomena happening and we can start to really understand where water is going to go and how much water and um, and all of that and, and really get a sense. So we can change the flow step size. So right now I have a pretty, pretty big step. I could I could reduce that and it starts to get a little bit more detailed for each step. Um, I can change the number max number of steps. I don't often have to change that. If you have a very large site, that could be a possibility, but you're going to start to get into territory where things are running very slowly. And then the water flow curve degree. So if we zoom in here, I can see that this is a one degree curve, meaning it's a polyline and it and it's going to be, um, you know, angular. If I move this to uh, two, it's immediately smoother and you can make it even smoother with the three. But after that, the the. Um, you know, there's diminishing returns on, on processing speed and um, smoothness of the curve. And then finally, there's this flow point grid size. If I change the flow point grid size to be smaller, it generates a smaller initial grid from which the water flow lines start. And, um, and it starts with a grid. And now this is like a little bit different than a lot of other flow line um, components because it's, it's trying to be very even in terms of how it starts. So it's a lot easier to see um, where volume is going. Um, and it's just, it's a, a visualization thing. Now we have one more interesting tweak, which is that, I'm just gonna turn this back to a more reasonable number. There's another interesting thing we can do, which is to place points on the water flow points layer. And I'm going to add a point there. And suddenly you see that there's only one flow line and it, and it actually emerges from wherever that point was in plan. I can duplicate that point uh, by holding alt and dragging the gumball here. So if I had a bunch of points, maybe defining an area or something like that, and I wanted to show, oh, hey, all the water from this area is going to go to this location. It could be a great way to visualize that or to even just understand how much water is going to come from a certain location and where is it going to go. So what else do we have here? We can change the color of the water. We can bake these onto flow, the flow lines layer. And I should probably, I'm going to say bake. And then I'm going to right click on this and say publish to remote panel. See how I, I created a, a new interface element by, by publishing that to the panel. It's kind of cool. You can make your own changes. You can even change the, add the color to this remote panel as well. And let's name it. Let's call it flow line color. There you go. It updates right up there. So if I hit save, I'm going to, I want my default workflow to start without these points. Hit delete. And yeah, I think that's it. The, just touring the script very briefly here, we have, um, you know, this automatically toggles to, uh, you know, if you have any points on this layer, this water flow points layer, this is going to, kick in and, and actually draw those points rather than the, the grid points. The, um, we have these, these different inputs for our step size, steps, and degree. And then we have our preview bake component here. And that's about it. The, the, one, the one tricky thing here that you will have to edit in this little script if you try to do a mesh is to, uh, it's already pulling in a mesh automatically but the mesh brep component converts. 
Another thing we could try to do is just plug this in directly, but part of the problem is it oversimplifies that mesh, uh, that brep a little bit, and it starts to get a little clunky. So if you want a smooth mesh, this, this component is going to, um, you know, some of the default settings there are going to give you a smoother mesh to start. That's it. Happy flowing.